What are your thoughts on more distant magnificent? I don't know what that is. If you want to enlighten me, uh, American Badger, I never, I really never knew how to explain transition. It's hard. It's hard. We don't realize what transition is going to do to us. We don't realize what the changes are that are coming our way. We don't realize that we're losing our culture, our friends, our, or everything. The way that we've been living for at least four years, some people even longer. So if we don't realize what changes are coming our way, we don't realize what we have to prepare for. And if we don't prepare for it, it's very hard to make any changes to it. But when you pay attention to it, when you're a little bit more in tune with the fact that like there's going to be challenges, you can make better changes for it. You can realize that you have to prepare that it's going to be hard and there's going to be a lot of challenges. The number one thing that happens, in my opinion, is you lose your sense of purpose. You lose who you are. And I guess if I had to give any advice, it'd be don't lose yourself. You don't really even know who you are really just yet. But take time. Get to know yourself. Realize that there are other ways of doing things. Realize that you have to open your mind. You have to drop the veteran ego. Because if you don't, before you know it, you'll be 30 pounds overweight. You'll be going through your first divorce, maybe your second. You'll push away the people that love you. You'll feel very angry towards society. You'll feel like you're not understood. You'll feel like you have no sense of belonging. And when you get to that point, you have to work your way back from there. A lot of times we move away from the military mindset because we've been so used to this organization, forced PT, forced labor in a way being used to being voluntold or volunteering for everything because that's just what was taught to us that was important. And then before you know it, you are in a place that you have to work your way back from. So take time when you get out, get to know yourself a little bit better, but also understand that there are a lot of good qualities that the military gave you. Leverage them. Use the positive stuff that the military gave you to change your mindset. Your environment is different. What you can control is right here. What you can control is the fact that if you don't push people away and you open up your mind and you're willing to learn a new way of thinking and you're willing to understand that you're going to have a hard time, you can start paying attention to these things a lot better. Thank you for joining me. If you're watching live, I appreciate you. And I'm just here to talk. No agenda. The topic was negotiating your failures into wins. But at the end of the day, you can do that when you have the right mindset, when you have the right people around you, when you understand that there are ways to do things that maybe they're not the way that you're used to doing them. When I got out, I picked up drinking. And it's not that I picked it up. I had been drinking, but I didn't realize it was a problem. I didn't realize that all the drinking that I was doing in the military wasn't normal in the real world. To be honest, it wasn't normal, period. But it almost served a purpose back then. You had to have that camaraderie. You had to have that freaking cohesiveness with your unit. Bubba, I see you just got off the Coast Guard as a maritime patrol officer. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to society. I hope you're doing well. If you're not, understand it gets better with time. There are different ways. And if you want more help or guidance, feel free to message me. I appreciate it. If you're watching this live on TikTok or on Instagram, I can see your comments. Uh, I'm trying to open up the Facebook page so I can see those comments as well. Uh, I just started doing this whole stream yard thing, so it's a little bit different. I'm still learning the ins and outs of it. All right. Wow, I have smoked the last 10 years away because I have not known how to transition. Listen, there's no timeline to transition. There's no, there's no perfect way. And 10 years seems to be the time frame that it's been taking most people to realize that they haven't been going about it the right way. But understand that recognition is its own reward. Recognition is the first step of understanding that if you haven't been doing things the right way, something needs to change. Now, in my opinion, a lot of it starts with the physical. Changing your environment, changing your behaviors, working out again, start eating the right foods, hire a coach. Get a mentor, invest in yourself, quit smoking, quit the drinking, or at least limit it. Stop pushing people away. 
Stop alienating people from yourself, even though you feel like they don't want to be around you. It's you pushing them away. And there's not an easy way to do it. It takes time. It takes effort. But there is a way to do it. Now, let me let me know what has been the biggest struggle for you since you got out. What has been the hardest thing that you've had to deal with since you've been out? I want to hear it. I want to see in the comments what has been the number one thing that that has been holding you back the most. How did I learn this? Whew, how much time do we have? I learned this through a lot of self-destruction, through experience, through me doing this to myself and pushing a lot of people away, through going through divorces, multiple, through me feeling like I had all the answers, to me feeling like my way of doing it was the best way because the Marine Corps, Marine Corps taught me this way. Hey, what's up, Lita? How you doing? And I also learned it through a lot of self-reflection and a lot of analysis and learning by reading, by studying the book that I was reading. Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life was one of the, probably the first ones that I read that really changed my mentality. And I didn't just read it. I didn't just consume it. I listened to it on Audible and I listened to it on repeat at least four or five times to really process the stuff that came in because it doesn't happen automatically. You don't just take information in unless you apply it. It's just noise, right? Unless you apply the things you're actively trying to work on, it's just noise. You have to work on taking the things that you are learning and studying and trying to be better for it. Try and apply it on a day-to-day -day basis. If you don't apply it and you don't take the lesson that you are walking away with, you're not going to change your day-to-day -day behaviors. Everyone's looking for this motivation, right? Motivation, motivation, motivation. Well, Motivation comes and goes, as we all know. Maybe you feel motivated today. Maybe you felt motivated last week. Maybe you'll feel motivated a week from now. But it's not consistent. How do you get motivation to be consistent? Well, in my opinion, the secret formula is by having consistent results. If you are doing something and you are seeing that it's working, it's going to motivate you. You're going to feel like, all right, this is working. I want to keep doing it because I feel better when I do it. And I'm getting results from it. And then you feel motivated. You can keep that train going. Well, how do you get consistent results, right? You get consistent results by having habits that you turn into routines. And you do these routines and then you start to see that it's changing your environment. It's changing your day to day. How do you make sure that your consistent results happen? By establishing priorities. What's important to you? What needs to not be important to you? It's not about doing more. It's about doing less of the things that you don't need in your life. One of the most successful indicators of people that are successful in life is not that they do more. It's that they do less of the things that we do that keep us back. Less of the negative financial decision-making process. Less of the binge eating. Less of the ignoring our health. Less of the watching Netflix for hours. They do less and less of these things because they make better decisions. It's not about doing more. It's about doing less of the negative things in your life that are holding you back. A lot of this has been learned. What's up, Kavik? How you doing? A lot of this has been learned by making changes in my life, by applying the things that I learned. Appreciate you, Kavik. Applying the things that I learned in my life and actually doing something with them. Because unless you actually do something and you apply the things that you are learning, it's just noise. Information without implementation is just noise. And if you want something different for yourself, if you're not happy with where you're at, if you want to live a better life this year, the only way to do that is by changing your behaviors. Again, it's not about doing more of this and more of that. It's about doing less of the negative things in your life that are holding you back. The ego, the ego that we have, dropping that. Understanding, if you want a better life for yourself, it's on you to create it. If you want to drop the ego, you have to learn that you have an ego. If you want to become a better father, friend, husband, whatever it is, how do you actively approach that? By changing your behaviors, by being humble, by learning, by asking questions, by communicating better, by drinking less, by smoking less, by showing up to work on time 
by being a good performer, by working out, by eating the right foods, by being present every single place that you are presently at and realizing that the veteran life is the life that you make of it. The military is over with. You're out. You're not in anymore. You need to drop that mentality and let it go. Yeah, absolutely. The only way that we can let it go is by realizing that it was a beautiful chapter of our life. And it meant a lot. But you have to stop resting on the laurels of your past. You have to stop living as if that was the best thing you've ever done. It's not. We have so much more to do. We have so much more left to accomplish. And we have to truly see it that way. Because if we don't, if we don't realize that there are more things for us to do in this life, we will keep going back to what we used to do and how it used to be. And we will keep wanting it. And it's not there anymore. The way that you were in the military, freaking disciplined, almost robotic-like, hyper-vigilant, right? All of these things served a purpose then. But now that hyper-vigilance, maybe it almost translates into paranoia. That freaking feeling of being disciplined and always being that freaking robot that did everything right. It almost translates into you feeling like you know better than everybody else. And nobody wants that. You alienate yourself. People don't see you the same way. People don't feel like you're approachable. This is not about ignoring the fact that we have issues as veterans. This is about addressing the issues and actually doing something about each and every one of them. Therapy does work, but you have to be willing to do the work. You have to be willing to be honest with yourself. A lot. I would start with Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. That is an amazing book. Extreme Ownership by Jock is also another amazing book. Um, I would start with those two. Um, Atomic Habits is another one that really helped kind of clarify the fact that my day-to-day is owned by me. Um, Own the Day by Marcus Aubrey is another amazing one. Um, There's a lot of them. And if anybody's here reading this or watching this, um, maybe off the top of my head they're not coming to me, but drop any recommendations you guys have. And typically I'm I'm in my library, but I don't have all my books here with me. But um, whatever book you choose to read, really dissect it and learn it and study it. Don't just jump from book to book to book. Don't just jump from YouTube to this, to that, to podcast, to this. Like stop and really reflect on what they're telling you. And if you want to apply anything from what they're telling you, if you want to apply anything that they're sharing with you, you have to, you have to actively engage it. Yes, Mental Toughness by Andy for sell is a good one. Um, I journal as I read. I love that. That's amazing. One of the things I've been doing is I've been adding notes to each book that I read because typically when I go back and reread it, the notes are in there and I can reflect on how I applied it, if I applied it, and what maybe changes I want to make to my mindset of what I can do about it. The Happiness Trap. I haven't read that one. I'll have to check it out. Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Another one, another great one. Thank you, Brian, for dropping that. Um, there's so many that are, are just not coming to mind right now. So another thing that I've realized about myself, and I'm going to share this with you guys because it's important. I know that me... I know that I I perform more optimally between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. It's like right now, my brain is not firing on all cylinders. And I recognize that. That doesn't mean I can't have conversations, but it just means that my power hours are going to be sometime between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. That's when I work best, right? So something that I encourage all of you guys to, to do is look at when do you perform to your best, and it doesn't mean that you can't do stuff in the later hours. I'm here. I'm, I want it to be present right now. I want it to have this conversation. But it also means that think about when you are at your best. And if you have to have conversations, do it during those times. If you have to perform optimally, do it, those, do it during those times. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yes, that's an amazing book. That's a book that my dad had me read when I was younger. Um, and I have a copy of it. Um, something that is a book I recommend to everyone as well. Atomic Habits, also a great book. All right, I'm trying to open up all the windows. I want to make sure I don't miss any comments. How's everybody doing today? How was your day? How did you win your day? How did you negotiate your day into wins instead of failures? How did you make sure that that little voice in the back of your head did not win today? And how did you make sure that that you turned that voice in the back of your head into something positive?
to five people to meet in heaven. I'll have to check it out. I haven't read that one. Tools of Titans, Tim Ferriss. I I have that one. I haven't had a chance to break it open yet. Um, it's on my it's on my. I have. I have different uh, locations for books, right? And the the location for the books that I'm going to read, they're on a different pile. Uh, but I love listening to his podcast. He has some great people on. Uh, how are you doing today? How did you make sure that you negotiated your wins into failures? How did you silence that negative voice in the back of your head? How are you actively working on making sure that the voice in your back of your head, you turn it into a positive? I really try and make sure that I have the best day ever, every single day. Honestly, everything is an added value. Even your tire popping on you on the highway is an added value because you got the chance to experience hardship, right? And the more you put yourself through chosen hardship, the more that you put yourself yourself through deliberate hard circumstances, the better you will be able to respond when hardship comes your way. When someone passes that you know, when you have a death in the family, when you lose your job, when your relationships end, you will be able to respond in a much better way if you have put yourself through deliberate hardships throughout your life. Jumping in the ice barrel, doing that workout when you don't feel like doing it, choosing to eat the meal that you prepped instead of saying yes to those donuts that your coworker brought into work. Making the decision to leave work when you're supposed to and spending time with your family when you know that deep down inside you wish you were just working more because you feel like you get a lot out of it. You get more out of making the hard decisions in your life and choosing deliberate hardships. That way when trouble comes your way, when things happen in life because they're going to happen, you're better equipped to be able to manage those situations in your life. You're better equipped to be able to translate the skills that you have leverage the way that you've been living your life. So that way, when hard things happen to you, you're not lost in the sauce. You're not playing catch up. You're not panicking. You're not going into the stressful or this anxiety mode where you don't know what to do. Believe it or not, friction and the deliberate decision to, like I said, do the hard things creates you see what i mean right now i'm not i'm not performing optimally cuz this is not my power hour but i want to come here live there's 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 a message i'm trying to relay and it's basically the, the idea that when you when you go to the gym and you work out you tear muscle right and it repairs and it gets stronger well life works the same way when you make a decision that's a little bit hard and that you can't make it normally and you decide to do the hard thing in life it makes the rest of your life easier because you are building up those calluses. You are building up resilience. You are establishing kind of a way of life. You're establishing the fact that you are a person that can manage these situations. You are a person that can do the hard things in life. I had to choose between doing my job with integrity or caring how, caring how like me. Okay. I had to choose my job. I had to choose between doing my job. Expecting first pro hit maintenance discrepancies, which affect them. However, the organization outweighs the individual. Absolutely. Brian said on Facebook that he had to choose between doing his job with integrity uh, and inspecting his friend's programs, hit maintenance discrepancies, which affect them. However, the art organization outweighs the individual. And in the long run, it also helps to them, right? I'm sure you did it in a tactful way. I'm sure you approached it the, the, the right way. I'm sure you were able to explain and, and help them grow as an individual without deliberately hurting them. And I'm sure they appreciated it. And there's a lot of growth in that, understanding that effective communication and active listening does play a huge part. I just finished up a coaching call with my clients where we went over the art of active listening. And the main point, the main thing that really stuck out was the fact that when you actively listen, when you, when you allow others to know that you are paying attention to them and deliberately doing your best to listen, you're not waiting to cast any judgment. You're not waiting to give them your opinion or your feedback. At the, in the long run, they're going to feel more comfortable approaching you, talking to you, coming to you. You are that voice of reason that they look for. You're not the person that's going to judge them or tell them how they could have done a better job or this or that. 
if we translate this to how it used to be in the military, we all have that staff sergeant, that platoon sergeant that we knew that we could go to, right? That we knew that if we went to them, maybe they'll tell you that, you know, the hell last corporal or whatever, but they're not going to make you feel like you're a complete screw up. They're going to make you feel like you can come to them and you trust them. At the end of the day, you, I will read your message when I have a chance, P. Did you send it to, to me directly on, on TikTok? Anyway, at the end of the day, they're going to make you feel like you can trust them. But we also know that one staff sergeant, that platoon sergeant that we feel like we can come to, who makes us look stupid, who criticizes us. I'll take, I'll take a look. Who criticizes us because they feel like they're direct and they don't mess around and they don't, they don't deal with the BS. Okay. Maybe it served a purpose when we were in, but we have to understand like those skills, they're not something that you want to bring into your life now. The, the fact that we have to learn that we're out now. The same way that we've approached things in the past in the military, they don't translate the way anymore. The same way that we used to do things in the military, it's not a way of living life anymore. Like I've said before, we don't come into or we don't come back in a society. We were never a part of society. But that also means that our society, our culture, our way of life is deeply, deeply ingrained into our time in the military. And we have to unlearn some stuff, but we also have to take the positive things with us, the discipline, the creativity, the willingness to adapt as needed. All of those things can translate into something positive. But the ego, the judgment, the fact that we feel like we were responsible for everyone in the room. And if we don't do something, the world will just fall apart. It won't. We might not realize that we have this veteran ego. But it's hurting us because if you feel like you're misunderstood and if you feel like nobody can relate to you or if you feel like you are alienated from your family, from your friends, I'm going to give you a hard truth. You've probably done something to cause that. You've probably not been approachable in the past. You've likely said something, treated someone a certain way or made them feel like you're just this veteran with an ego. We should be proud of who we are. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But that doesn't mean that we belittle other people. And again, it might not be intentional. It's just how we've been raised in the military. We have to let that life go. We have to learn that there is growth in discomfort and coming out and realizing that we are not everything that we thought we were and we have more to learn. Forced discomfort allows you to be able to handle hard times with ease. Absolutely, Justin. I completely agree with you, brother. I think you hit it on the hit it on the head right there. Hit the nail on the head. All right, guys. I'm going to be wrapping this up. I just want to come on here real quick. And thank you for joining. One of the most the most valuable thing in life, the thing we don't get back is time. Thank you, Area 55. I appreciate it. And if you're here with me and you tuned in, even if it was for five minutes, if you've been here the whole time, I appreciate you. I'm doing my best to go live more often because sometimes the most important thing that we can share is our word, right? And don't get me wrong. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've made a lot of mistakes, but the way that I've learned is by understanding that I don't know everything. And that's the only way that you can truly change. By understanding you have a lot left to learn. The military was, was just one chapter of your life. Beautiful chapter. But we have much more to do. We have many more stories to write. Do not forget that. You are worth more. You need to do more. And I want you to keep growing. I want you to do more. I want you to realize that you have a lot left to live. There is success after the service. Have a beautiful night. And Justin, I'd love to partner up with the live brother. Have a good night, guys. That guy that lurks. If you Go on to my Facebook at JP, the veteran coach. Uh, the whole live should be posted there. Um, I'm here for it. If you need anything, you can always send me a message and I always do my best to reply to everybody. Today, I had over a hundred some messages uh, and I think I replied to every one of them. If I didn't get back to you today and you sent me a DM, I apologize. I will get back to you tonight or tomorrow morning. Probably tomorrow morning, I'm going to spend the rest of my evening with my son 
take uh thank you guys have a great night take care bye remember be a freaking fighter jet do not be a hot air balloon do not flow through life aimlessly know where you are going set your sights on it and aim at it with everything you have be relentless